Hello guys, we are back with our next unit. In this unit, we will be covering all the dynamic pro programming problems guys. So like most of the dynamic programming problems, according to our syllabus, we will be covering them. Like 0 by 1 by 0 by 1 knapsack and there are many other pro pro problems which we will be covering in this chapter guys. Like backtracking and, for and uh, forward approach for multi-staged graph and all pair shortest path and there are multiple problems that we will be covering guys. So basically the first question that comes to your mind is what is this dynamic programming now? So basically in our last lectures we started with the greedy approach. First we started with divide and conquer. Then we moved to greedy where it is greedy for minimum or maximum. And now we are here at dynamic programming. Okay. So basically most of the times whenever you hear the dynamic programming you will be getting scared. The, but that what is this dynamic programming? Anytime how many times... Do I revise it but I don't understand things clearly? You will be thinking like that, right? Yes. So most of us think like that. So in this whole series, I'll try to make it a bit easy for you. Okay? Okay. So first, let us understand what is this dynamic programming. After that, I'll be going through the theory, guys. Okay? Okay. So basically, I hope everyone knows what is a Fibonacci series or Fibonacci numbers. So basically, Fibonacci series is nothing but initially the 0th value okay so just give me a second i'll be just showing you that it will be clear for you okay okay so fibonacci of a zero is always zero guys assume that as a function so fibonacci of a one is always one fibonacci of a two is nothing but the addition of the previous two that is nothing but one fibonacci of a three is nothing but the addition of previous two that is two fibonacci of a four that is nothing but the addition of previous two. That is three. Fibonacci of five, previous two, five, previous eight, 13. So in this way, the Fibonacci series continues, guys. Okay. So if I ask you to find the Fibonacci of 10, you'll be calculating like this and you'll be moving on till 10 and you'll be solving it, right? Okay. What if I ask you Fibonacci of 99? What will be the situation of yours? You'll be calculating from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, you'll be reaching up to 99. That's a really a lengthy process for us also, right? Okay. So what if, what if we, want, we ask the computer to do it? So here we are writing it below. But computer, will we are not storing anywhere, right? If you are writing the Fibonacci program. Sorry, just. Okay, sorry for that. So when you are writing a program in Fibonacci. So the program will be in this way, guys, basically. So you will be continuing until you find the Fibonacci of a particular number. You will be continuously going back, 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 back and counting it and adding it. That's it. You will not store anywhere the values. Because of storing 99 values, you will be thinking that array, that storage will be wasted. So you will be thinking in that way and you will not be storing the answers every anywhere. You will be returning, returning, returning and finally you will be getting the answer. But whenever you are doing for larger numbers. So basically, just give me a second. I will be showing you an example. So Fibonacci of 99. So Fibonacci of 99 is nothing but Fibonacci of 96, okay, 97 plus Fibonacci of 98, right? The addition of previous two terms. Again, these two terms, Fibonacci of 95, Fibonacci of 96. So if you notice here, Fibonacci of 96 here, Fibonacci of 96, Fibonacci of 97, right? So if you notice here, this Fibonacci of 96, 7 is repeated here. This Fibonacci of 96 is repeated here. So indirectly, if you store the values somewhere, you can directly substitute this part, right? So that is what the dynamic programming is. So in dynamic programming, whenever you divide a problem into multiple parts, and there should be relation in between these modules, guys. So assume you divided a big problem into multiple parts. Okay. So each part is dependent on each other. So there is some relation in between this part and this part. Okay. So you will be storing this value somewhere in your memory location. So that when you are solving this problem, this value might help. And when you are solving this problem, these two values might help. This problem, these all values will help. So this is nothing but dynamic programming. Like depending on the previous results you will be predicting or you will be generating the current result okay so now let us go through the theory so that you'll be having a clear idea okay so it is just like divide and conquer method solving the problem by combining the solutions of its sub problem okay so that's what we have done here right so we 
went till the bottom and we start we solved from bottom and we stored them the only thing that comes here is storing that's it okay so sub problems are not independent so indirectly they are dependent on each other that is when they share some sub problem like some problem like some part of the other problem is dependent on the previous part of the problem that's it so a dynamic programming algorithm solve every sub problem just once so it is not going to solve again and again so if you observe here if you write a normal algorithm it continues for this again this for this also it will continue blindly there is no storage of any values guys so this is the problem with normal algorithm so that is the reason why dynamic programming came into play only once then save its answer in the memory by using some tables or anything whatever it might be so it will be saving those values so in our representation we will be using tables to store those values so thereby avoiding the work of recomputing the answers every time the sub problem is encountered so instead of solving again 96 into 2 again that value into 2 again that value into 2 until 0 and 1 it will just store these values so that it can directly substitute and it can solve okay okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea on dynamic programming and why we are going for dynamic programming okay to be simple we can say dynamic programming is mainly an optimization over plain recursion so basically instead of doing the same process again 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 we are storing them that's a shortcut for us now okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea on this so that is what i have just written here so the only thing is that dynamic programming need or use more memory to store okay so dynamic programming should be used only for large data sets or for large data operations operational data so basically if you use this for finding fibonacci of 3 will it be useful guys because by two steps you'll be getting why are you wasting the storage for storing this 1 2 2 and all those things instead of that you can do two operations to get the result whereas for 99 you need to do some hundreds of operations even greater than 100 it could be guys so that is the reason why we will be using dynamic programming only on larger data sets so basically using fibonacci fibonacci number using the tree explanation so this is nothing but the tree explanation so for recursive pro pro problems we will be solving them in this way to identify what it is going on indirectly okay so we will be saying fibonacci of 3 is dependent on fibonacci 2 and 1 fibonacci 2 is depending on 1 so here it is completely depending on the previous two as if if we are trying for 99 we need to know 98 and 97 so again 98 will be divided into 2 again 97 will be divided into 2 but again here we will be have repetitions so this is what i have written here guys so to avoid these repeated calculations we are we will be storing these values like once you compute a value you will be storing it somewhere that's it okay so again all comes by step by step done okay so this is the normal algorithm like fibonacci for fibonacci so int fib of int n if n is less than or equal to 1 return n return fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2 So here you are not doing any storage. You are just moving back, 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 back until you get the result, and you'll be finally printing the result somehow, like recursive call, recursive calls. Okay. So here we are not storing the results anywhere. Hence, it is not optimal solution for larger inputs. In dynamic programming, we resolve this issue by storing them. So this is the first step that will be happening. So Fibonacci of zero is zero. Fibonacci of one is one. So from two to n. So based on the input n, you, here you will be considering only one of ones, guys. So if you are calculating for ninety nine, ninety nine minus two, that is nothing but these two are already returned, right? Minus two. So at the end you will be doing ninety seven operations only, not more than hundred. Previously, if you are doing, you will be doing some hundreds of operations for the same thing. So here you will be calculating up to Fibonacci of ninety nine or ninety seven, and you will be directly going to Fibonacci of ninety nine, and it is nothing but ninety. Okay, assume that you are calculating till ninety eight. You will be calculating ninety eight and ninety seven here, so you already have the values. You will be substituting them. You will get the result. That's it. Okay, so I hope everyone got a clear idea on dynamic programming and why we are using it. The main thing you should learn is why we are using it to optimize these kind of solutions. Because if you are using normal method, this this uh, Fibonacci series is really complex for larger inputs. Okay, so we are following four steps for solving any problem. First, you need to understand the structure of the solution. so basically how you need to store the values or how you should do it after that recursively defining the value of optimal solutions so basically we are storing here right so in that way how you need to store them and you need to compute from bottom to up fashion so basically here if you see i am not if i my requirement is to find fibonacci of 99 but i started at 0 1 and i am moving to 2 now after that i'll be moving to 3 4 5 6 
that is nothing but bottom to top if top is having 99 the bottom is having one i am moving bottom to top okay then construct an optimal solution so at the end you will be constructing this optimal solution so i hope everyone got a clear idea on this so in the next lecture we will be seeing some differences between all the three types that we have discussed till now those are nothing but divide and conquer greedy approach and dynamic programming all these three combinations we will be discussing in the next lecture so i hope everyone got a clear idea so in the next lecture we will be discussing about divide and conquer versus dynamic programming thank you thanks for watching